We cannot separate our mind from our body. It's normal. It's normal. It is for just for normal healthy, psychologically healthy people. But it is just uh, uh, happened that uh, your mind uh, adopted a wrong relationship with the food. But if it would not be wrong uh, uh, relationship, you would not gain weight. So um, yeah, after six, seven months, of course, it's not only gastric balloon. Together with psychotherapy, we have very good chance to, uh, uh, it's enough time to change your relationship with the food, to change your eating habit. You know that habit is not changing in one day. So I would say balloon is, no, is not just balloon, it's not enough to, to have a result. So combination of the, of the psychotherapeutic work is important. Okay, psychotherapy, there is no side effect, only positive. Because the way how psychotherapy is said, that with each session, patient is becoming happier and happier. Weight loss surgery is geared towards people who are actually obese, so BMI of over 30. So that uh, is a procedure that um, uh, enables them to lose weight and large amounts of weight, which will then um, get them to a safe BMI. Sometimes these patients then will have loose tissue around the arms, tummy, breasts, etc. And that's where I come in. I do the cosmetic kind of um, improvements. So if somebody has lost 40 kilos, I can do, I, I can do the skin resection and really uh, shape the body back into where it, where it can be and where it should be. The problem with a crash diet such as that one is at some point you might be invited let's say to a party and all that's available contains carbohydrates. The minute you have a taste of something that you've been forbidding from yourself is when now it opens the Pandora's box for you to start eating even more because you've not had a taste of that carbohydrate for so long you're going to want to eat it more and more and, and then now you start feeling guilty, you punish yourself and then now you enter a very vicious cycle yeah. of eating healthy but also punishing yourself and then it, it doesn't end well so the best method is to just have a balanced diet because even the starch plays an important part uh, in your body as does the fats as do the minerals proteins and vegetables we have two types of the balloon there are some balloons which uh, we put endoscopically so that balloon we keep for uh, six to seven months so it's endoscopic balloon. And there is another balloon which we keep for four months, but patients swallow that balloon. So that is the difference. Balloon is taking space of the stomach and protecting you from feeling of hunger. So even if patient feel like to overeat, uh, there is no space. And meanwhile, and I'm always encouraging my patients who went through gastric balloon to go through the course of psychotherapy. Cosmetic surgery itself is not really uh, ideal for losing weight, although obviously with some of the procedures I do, you do lose a substantial amount of weight. For example, liposuction, it can be up to five, six, seven kilos. Tummy tucks, also removing uh, many kilos of tissue, fat and skin. But most of my patients ideally should be close to um, a, a safe BMI of definitely less than 30 in order for me to shape their bodies. And shaping the bodies is really what cosmetic plastic surgery is all about. Post-bariatric surgery. So it is reconstructive because um, if somebody has lost 30, 40, 50 kilos, um, then often the skin is so loose that uh, the skin hangs down uh, like, uh, like very baggy clothes and um, patients really don't feel comfortable. So in those patients, the post-bariatric surgeries that we do um, often is the tummy tuck, so reducing the, the, the loose skin around the tummy and the waist, even the back lift, so um, that's re resecting the excess skin on the back and also lifting the buttocks up because they become saggy as well, enhancing them as well with a bit of fat. Um, the second most common procedure is uh, reducing the, the saggy skin on the arms. So that's called an arm lift or brachioplasty. And then certainly the breasts as well in men and in women. So in, in, in women often um, the weight loss surgery there uh, um, 
causes very droopy and empty breasts and that can be um, made pretty again um, with a breast lift, maybe fat grafting, also breast reduction. Gastric balloon um, complications. It can be leakage very rarely, uh, all that we know, and um, extremely rare. I don't remember when I seen leakage. Yeah, but it can be. And if we do, when we do endoscopic balloon, we put their contrast. So in case of leakage, patient will see blue urine. So when patient is vomiting, he can develop uh, gastritis. So that's why this we, need, we are observing. We, we have very close, if you have one, one vomiting, like after balloon, it's okay. But if it is a third day or fourth day, we need immediately to, to discuss it. Patient support begins pre-bariatric procedures and by bariatric procedures that would entail either the gastric balloon or bariatric surgery. And they require support all the way from the beginning when they come in for their consultation to assist them to choose the procedure that will work best for them. And also to guide them after they've chosen the procedure to tell them how best to prepare ahead of it. And then post care, once they've had the procedure, how best to adjust and get back to living a normal life. So we guide our patients through providing 24-7 access to our staff in case they have any questions. And then we have protocols and guidelines for following ahead of procedures, things like uh, the 10-day liquid diet that some patients have to go through before a bariatric procedure. We also do psychological evaluation with our doctor, Dr. Shukina, and then enroll them in a program called psychotherapy for correction of eating habits to help them maintain long-term success in weight management. And then of course, there's the nursing care that we give them once they've had their procedures done. There's um, the diet after weight loss surgery. Um, so that one, I'm sure you've talked about that, that uh, there's a lot of supplements involved because the stomach can't absorb all this, the nutrients. What we offer at Vitality Fountain Clinic is we offer intravenous vitamin drips, um, specifically geared to bariatric patients. So uh, we add uh, certain vitamins like vitamin Bs, um, vitamin B12s and, um, and, and certain amino acids to, to rebuild the kind of, to, to allow the healing. Um, so there's a, there's a good mixture of uh, vital um, electrolytes, vitamins, amino acids, that we would give the patient intravenously, which means into the vein. So that then ar uh, arrives exactly where it needs to go. So all the cells take those nutrients um, from the drip and, and use it for them to then recover.